The Steam Deck. Valve's new portable hardware is a seriously impressive piece of kit. With its powerful AMD Van Gogh APU, the Steam Deck is capable of running most modern games at good performance levels, often equaling or exceeding last-gen console systems. But last-gen performance is becoming a less and less relevant benchmark. With demanding software on the horizon and last-gen systems finally starting to fall by the wayside, the Xbox Series S is establishing itself as the baseline for modern titles. This is the console that developers will have to work around to ship new games. Even the most demanding cross-platform titles will have to find a home on Microsoft's tiny console. So here's the question. Can we push the Steam Deck to equal the performance and quality settings in Xbox Series S games? Matching Series S performance in the Steam Deck is a challenge for sure. But if we can get there, perhaps the deck can deliver acceptable results in future titles. Looking at this spec sheet, the two systems aren't as far apart as you may think. Both machines are based around the same AMD technologies, Zen 2 CPUs paired with RDNA 2 GPUs. The Steam Deck is substantially paired back relative to its stronger console cousin, but critically it's targeting a much lower output resolution. The Series S is typically aiming for resolutions in the 1080p to 1440p range while the Steam Deck is limited to just 1280 by 800 on its internal display, or 720p with 40 pixel black bars above and below the image. So the fact that the Steam Deck is theoretically less than half as powerful in GPU compute and RAM bandwidth isn't a huge issue here. A 7-inch screen with essentially a 720p resolution is a forgiving canvas for game content relative to a large format 4K television. Cutting resolution alone may be enough to give us the slack we need to equal the current gen consoles. We're going to take a look at a range of demanding current gen software on both machines. Resolution and detail cuts will be in the cards, but the goal here is Series S equivalent frame rates at roughly Series S equivalent settings. We've elected to run the games in the default SteamOS operating system to best reflect the typical user experience. So can we push the Steam Deck to deliver Series S-like results? Cyberpunk 2077 is a demanding title, infamously thrashing the last-gen consoles with heavy CPU and storage loads. But current-gen consoles, even the Series S, managed to acquit themselves quite well and turn out a good-looking and stable rendition of Night City. On Steam Deck, there are essentially two paths to take here. The first path is to push settings more in line with the Series S, which seems close to the PC's high preset. Helpfully, Cyberpunk includes a pre-balanced Steam Deck preset, which in practice is a mix of medium and high settings, which do actually seem like a reasonably close match for the S. Bumping the ambient occlusion setting to medium fills in the only glaring settings deficit. Unfortunately, the price we pay here is resolution. Here, Cyberpunk is running with FSR 1.0 quality enabled at a 720p output, meaning an internal resolution of approximately 854 by 480. Even on the Steam Deck's small screen, Cyberpunk is lacking clarity, especially on distant objects. The FSR does an okay job of preserving edges, although in-surface detail and fine geometry don't hold up to any sort of scrutiny. The second path is to take those optimized Steam Deck settings and make some additional strategic settings compromises to achieve better image quality. Dialing down volumetrics, shadows, and a few other settings allows us to bump image quality all the way to a full 720p. Cyberpunk looks so much cleaner as a result, and the primary visual concession seems to be more obvious shadow draw-in, which isn't terribly noticeable during typical play. Both approaches yield a consistent 30fps when paired with SteamOS's framerate limiter. Open-world driving can provoke a late frame or two at times, but generally we are locked to 30, even during more intense moments. These are extremely impressive results, to be clear. This is Cyberpunk on a handheld, at good settings and with solid frame rates. Really excellent stuff. Next up is Control, Remedy's moody technical showpiece. Series S operates at 900p resolution, reconstructed up to 1080p, with a mix of settings that mostly correspond to the low preset on PC. The trade-off for those settings concessions is a relatively smooth 60fps update, which we'll be aiming to emulate on the deck. To match the Series S, we're pegging the deck to the low preset, with textures bumped up to the high setting. 
60 FPS remains the target here, and 720p60 is actually possible most of the time. Smaller corridors and combat sections hit 60 FPS 720p mostly, but there are frequent drops. It's not a horrible experience, but it's definitely a bit too unstable, and the game can hang significantly below 60 FPS for extended periods. So cutting resolution to 540p and using Remedy's temporal upsampling to reconstruct a 720p-like image is the right move here. On the deck screen, the difference between these two resolutions isn't too large, and still shots do manage to resolve at close to native res levels of detail. This is the same sub-native approach taken by the Series S, of course, and the game still looks great on the deck screen. Thankfully, these cuts are enough to deliver 60fps performance, generally speaking. Most areas and combat encounters play back at a 60fps update, with the occasional 33 or 50 millisecond frame punctuating the experience. There are rare moments of heavy load that can cut frame rates somewhat more severely, but for the most part these infrequent delayed frames are the worst it gets, and I wasn't bothered very much by them. A locked 720p30 at the medium settings preset is also achievable with the use of SteamOS's frame limiter, if you prefer image quality to performance. I do think that aiming for 60fps is the right move however, and critically we can achieve broadly Series S level settings here. Grid Legends is a polished, fluid, and graphically accomplished arcade racer that delivers a great 60fps experience on Series S at a dynamic 1440p. Microsoft's console seems pegged to the high PC settings preset in most areas, with cube map based reflections and shadow map quality seemingly a match for the PC preset here. So on Steam Deck we are going to start with the high settings preset as a baseline, though some strategic cuts are necessary. Compromises on shadows, crowd density, and volumetrics are in the cards, though you would be hard pressed to notice the differences on the Steam Deck screen. The upshot of these settings tweaks is that Grid Legends runs at a full 720p60 on the Steam Deck in typical play. The game just looks fantastic and performance is very solid in most conditions. There are a few areas where we can spot some frame rate dips, however. Collisions with other vehicles can sometimes drop frames, particularly with a full grid of cars on screen. Heavy weather effects can also cause issues. Plus, replays run at a slightly sketchy performance level though Series S also has problems here. Grid Legends plays just fine at 60fps for the most part of course, with only occasional problems, but the issue here is that there's little room to compromise on visual settings to push performance further. We've already cut the biggest FPS offenders down to their lowest acceptable levels, and downgrades elsewhere would put us too far below the Series S experience to really be considered comparable. There is a dynamic resolution option, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to work properly. SteamOS does offer a variety of tricks to give us a bit more performance stability in titles like this, but I feel like the best option is simply to lower the screen refresh rate to 50Hz. These frame rate lapses are easily cleared up for the most part with reduced performance target, with a few exceptions during gameplay and replays. 50Hz feels nearly as smooth as 60Hz, which is probably helped by the game's high quality motion blur. Grid Legends performs really nicely on the Steam Deck, and a Series S-like experience is absolutely possible here. The last two titles are a little bit more challenging on the Steam Deck. Dirt 5 uses a dynamic res on Series S that typically hovers around 1080p and targets 60fps with similar settings to the PC's medium preset. It's a great looking off-road adventure, but unfortunately it doesn't scale that well to the Steam Deck. It takes a pretty serious set of cuts to achieve 60fps in this title. In my testing, setting every available option to low with the render scale at 50% could indeed essentially lock to 60 FPS, albeit with massive quality reductions. It does play and feel rather nice here, but the 360p resolution is a little bit too low to stomach. A more conservative route is to simply lower our performance expectations and accept a cut to 30 FPS. By enabling the Steam Deck's built-in 30fps cap, we can push settings much further and achieve 720p rendering with a mix of medium and high settings. Performance is a locked 30fps during gameplay at least, with no deviance whatsoever that I could detect. So why isn't the Steam Deck performing a little bit better here? Well, Dirt 5's PC port is fairly unforgiving, with heavy CPU and GPU demands. Running the game through Proton, we essentially inherit the performance characteristics of the underlying PC code. 
so we have to make some hard choices if the PC port happens to be a bit more demanding. Dirt 5 still looks and runs great, but we're not particularly close to the Series S. Guardians of the Galaxy will round out our comparisons, and it's a bit of a worst case scenario for the Steam Deck. The settings menu provides the first hint that things might not go so well here. There are only a few settings that seem to have any impact on performance whatsoever, and in practice the game performs very similarly no matter what we select. The rather limited settings menu is especially odd, considering that the Series S does seem to use some settings that are lower than the PC's low settings options. For instance, in this initial cutscene, there's far greater foliage density on the Steam Deck. Despite the fact that we're basically using the lowest settings on Steam Deck, albeit with texture set to high and the post-processing effects enabled. If cutting back foliage is a sensible compromise to achieve better performance in the Series S, why isn't the same option exposed in the PC settings? The only tool we have to address the performance faults is to engage FSR 1.0, which is built into Guardians of the Galaxy. Unfortunately, we need to dip to the FSR's quality preset, which produces an 854 by 480 rendering resolution, just like in Cyberpunk. Image quality takes a big hit, and the game has a bit of an upscaled, artificially enhanced look that isn't especially pleasing. That wouldn't be great on its own, but that's not even enough to hit a stable 30 FPS. Long views, combat, and the use of overlay effects can cause performance dips down to the mid 20s at worst. It's definitely still playable, but it's far from ideal. There's also a strange flickering issue that pops up in certain shots. It's not a major annoyance, but it is a reminder that Proton can't always translate DirectX without issues. Most compatibility issues on the deck are interface related in my experience, like a game that requires mouse or touchscreen input to navigate a launcher. But graphics glitches aren't uncommon either, even if they aren't show-stopping complications. So the combination of an inflexible PC version combined with Proton flakiness produces a title that doesn't really hold up well on the Steam Deck. The Series S doesn't acquit itself particularly well here either, generally running at 1080p 30, with a mix of settings that seems impossible to replicate using the options on PC. But image quality and performance on the deck are just too compromised to produce a satisfying outcome. So can Valve's Steam Deck be a match for the Series S? In current software at least, the results are surprisingly close. The first three titles that we looked at do largely live up to the Series S standards. The lowered resolution target obviously helps, but beyond that we're broadly similar to the Series S releases in performance and settings terms across all three games. The Steam Deck tends to fall behind somewhat in current software when the PC release is unusually demanding or is otherwise limited in some way. If the PC version performs poorly, it's safe to say that the deck will fall behind as well. But playing modern titles in the Steam Deck over the past few weeks has really illustrated just how strong the system can be. Valve's OS team deserves a lot of credit here, as SteamOS offers a ton of features to extract the most from the limited hardware. Real-time performance profiling, proper frame rate caps, user selectable refresh rates, a litany of upscaling options. These tools allow us to easily understand performance issues and to squeeze as much out of the power constrained APU as we can. The software environment is easy to use while giving enthusiasts plenty of levers to tune performance just right. But looking ahead, there are some potential trouble spots as we get deeper into this new generation. I suspect that the CPU may prove the primary issue with only half the multi-core performance of the new consoles, even at its maximum clock speeds. Cross-gen titles should be no problem, as the Zen 2 CPU cluster here comfortably outperforms the 8-core Jaguars that these games were originally designed around. Upcoming software may not be so kind, however, particularly games designed around the CPU saturating Unreal Engine 5. Four CPU cores with middling clocks is unlikely to cut it. Games that make extensive use of ray tracing are also a concern. With just eight RDNA 2 CUs, the deck simply isn't capable of doing very many ray tracing calculations at once. Now, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition and its brilliant RTGI implementation does downsize quite nicely onto the deck, but future games are bound to be more challenging. Perhaps a more basic problem for the deck is the fact that ray tracing is not currently supported in the deck's default Proton build but this will hopefully change as the AMD Linux drivers continue to mature. 
Ultimately, I suspect that without specific optimization work or dramatically scaled back settings, the Steam Deck may struggle as the generation progresses. A hypothetical 30 FPS game with heavy ray tracing and burdensome CPU loads may be too challenging to run well on the Steam Deck. The needed scalability in that software simply may not be there to make the game playable. But that's enough looking forward. I thought I'd close this video with a brief look back at the past. The Series S has an extensive backwards compatibility library, including a wide array of Xbox 360 titles. Some of these titles have received enhancements to frame rate or resolution, but many games are still locked to Xbox 360 settings. Deus Ex Human Revolution is a good example. On Series S, we're getting a 720p30 rendition of Eidos Montreal's first person RPG. There are still some key advances over the game on original hardware. Most notably, the frame rate is a locked 30 FPS, unlike the 360 original, which could be a bit shaky. But the performance targets are all identical to the original code. The Steam Deck is more than capable of turning out a locked 720p60 here on the default settings, with plenty of performance overhead to spare. The title is much more responsive as a result, despite the fact that Series S offers much higher performance on paper. Without the configurability of a PC, most console backwards compatibility efforts simply replicate the original software and inherit many of its fundamental flaws. On the other hand, some titles do see a performance uplift on Series S. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, a 2012 kart racing title, received an update courtesy of Microsoft late last year to give the game an FPS boost from the 30 FPS of the original release to 60 FPS when running on an Xbox Series S or Series X console. Unfortunately, the game is still bound to the 1152 by 544 resolution of the Xbox 360 code, which is a mere 68% of 720p. The Steam Deck has no issues whatsoever hitting 720p 60 here using the default settings. And again, the performance metrics suggest that we could push the system further. I did notice the occasional one-off duplicate frame when capturing the system over HDMI but playing the title on the console itself, the game seemed completely locked to 60 FPS. It's a really solid experience. These older titles really sing on the deck, hitting high frame rates with lots of processing time to spare. This is where Valve's system feels most comfortable and where its advantages over more rigid console platforms are most pronounced. In contemporary games, the Steam Deck can achieve a performance profile remarkably similar to the Series S. The deck needs to be pushed right to the edge to get there with suitably poor battery life, but the results are seriously impressive. Looking ahead, the outlook is a little bit more cloudy, as certain hardware shortcomings are bound to become more obvious over time. But when the Steam Deck is firing on all cylinders, it can absolutely achieve the portable Series S dream. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell to get YouTube notifications. To view a high quality version of this video, check out the Patreon at digitalfinder.net, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.